Today I'm going to do something slightly different and deviate away from my normal cycling content. In fact, I'm going to be wearing my cameraman head and going through the features of the Feutech AK2000C gimbal that Feutech have very kindly sent me to test. Now you may be asking yourself, what on earth has this got to do with cycling? Well, I'll be honest and say not a huge amount, but hopefully using this gimbal will help me improve the production value of the cycling content that I will be producing. Hopefully, if you're still watching, you'll know exactly what a gimbal is, what it does, and how it works and you'll also know that literally every single gimbal of this size needs to be balanced and calibrated before it can be used properly. Well I'm not going to go into that because Feutech themselves have some excellent videos on their website that can do that far better than I ever could. Instead I'm just going to move on and highlight the features of the gimbal. At first glance, the AK2000C reminds me very much of the DJI Ronin S. They're of a similar size and appearance. They've even got the same locking mechanism on the axis. But the main difference for me though is the AK2000C has this little smart OLED screen, which I'll talk more about later. First off, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. It's made of metal, it weighs 1.1 kilos, and the hand grip has wooden sides that feel very comfortable when you hold it. All in all, it's a very good quality product. It comes complete with its own substantial tripod, which attaches using a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. The battery is internal and once it's charged it will power the gimbal for about seven hours. Now because the battery is internal it can't be replaced so if it runs out while you're shooting that's it you have to stop and recharge it. And like all rechargeable batteries it will only have a certain amount of charge cycles in it so when it reaches the end of its life the whole gimbal will have to be replaced but fortunately that doesn't happen under normal circumstances for several years it has a payload capacity of 2.2 kilos which is more than enough for most dslrs and mirrorless cameras Today I'm using it with my Sony a6400 and with the kit lens that comes in at about 600 grams and this is probably towards the lighter end of the weight range. So how does the gimbal work? Well you begin by switching it on using this little button on the side here. Once it's powered up it's immediately in pan mode and this works pretty much as you would imagine. You can walk along and the gimbal will maintain the level horizontal axis of the camera and as you pan left and right it will follow your movement. Using the touch screen on the gimbal you can then access the other modes. So at the top left hand side here we have the all lock mode and that locks all of the roll, the pan and the tilt axis if you want to get a stable shot. Then you have the pan and tilt mode, which allows you to pan and tilt manually. And then at the bottom here, we also have the all follow mode. And that follows all of the pan, the roll and the tilt axis to give an FPV type view. The gimbal also has a little joystick, which allows you to pan and tilt the camera manually. On the back of the gimbal, there's a trigger button. If you press it twice, it recenters. If you press it three times, it enters selfie mode. And if you hold it, it will do one of three things. It will either enter quick follow mode, lock mode, or pan and tilt follow mode. And you set this using the smartphone app. If you swipe left on the touch screen, you can then enter inception mode, time-lapse mode or selfie mode. Inception mode allows you to do these weird kind of rolling shots. 
In the menu, you can tell the camera to roll either clockwise or anti-clockwise once or several times, and you can even control the speed using the slider. In time-lapse mode, you can set a path and a time frame, and then the gimbal will automatically track that. And in selfie mode, it rotates the camera 180 degrees, so it's very useful for vlogging. And if you swipe left, you enter the settings menu. The payload settings is where you adjust the strengths of the various motors. And you'll probably need to do this if you find that when you're in lock mode, the gimbal drifts a little bit. You can adjust each motor individually, but there's also an auto adaptation. And if you press that, it will just do it automatically. In shooting mode, you can choose either default mode smooth mode, action mode or customize and this basically determines how quickly the motors respond to your movements. So in default mode and smooth mode it's fairly slow while in action mode it's quite quick. The joystick setting options allows you to control the direction and the speed of the joystick and the settings button allows you to calibrate the gimbal and choose your language, either Chinese or English. There's also the Feutech on smartphone app, which gives you access to all of the same features that's available on the smart touch screen, plus a few others such as the virtual joystick, which allows you to control the pan and the tilt remotely. For me, one of the great features of the AK2000 is its ability to control the camera. Now it does come complete with a set of leads, but unfortunately for me, I've been unable to make them work with my A6400. Instead, I've had to dive into the app and get it to control the camera using Wi-Fi. Now my concern here was that I would have to do it every single time I switch the gimbal on, but that doesn't appear to be the case. It seems that once you've got it to pair once, it will pair every single time after that. Once you have got the gimbal talking to the camera, you can start and stop recording using the shutter button just below the joystick. And if you swipe right once using the touchscreen, you can control the ISO and the exposure compensation. And if you swipe right once more, you can control the color balance, which is particularly useful if you don't want to keep touching the camera while it's on the gimbal. I've been using the Feotech for a couple of weeks now, and I have to say that I'm really pleased with it and I really like it. The shots stay nice and level and the movements are all super smooth, and that essentially is everything you want from a gimbal. On the slight downside though, I have noticed that the gimbal does take a couple of seconds to return the camera to a completely horizontal position after a couple of moves. It's only minor, but I do notice it, and it can be a little bit annoying. For me personally though, the main feature of the AK2000C has to be the smart touchscreen. Unlike the DJI Ronin S, it allows me to control the camera's ISO and white balance without having to touch it while it's on the gimbal. Price-wise, it's also extremely competitive when you compare it to the DJI. To pick up a Ronin S here in the UK, you're looking at about £450, while on Amazon, you can pick up the AK2000C for just under £200. All in all, I think this Feotech is an absolutely fantastic gimbal. It's very easy to use, it does exactly what you want it to do, and the shots are super smooth. Thanks for watching.